How's everything been going? Where are you guys located? Uh, New Jersey, so pretty good. Still on a fairly decent lockdown, um, but things are slowly coming to open up. Small, you know, businesses are able to do curbside pickup again and stuff like that. Where are you at? I'm in Buffalo, New York. So oh, okay, so straight ahead, straight up. Yeah. <laughs> that's super, super far, but they just started opening stuff up today. Um, but my kids are out of school for the rest of the year. Um, it's kind of a shit show in New York, so. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're fortunately still able to work um, our day jobs, but yeah, I, I've seen everybody in this area, their kids are all out of school for the rest of the year too. Yeah, that's, that's been kind of the, the, the blessing because it gives you something to do, spend time with them, but kind of uh, not a blessing at the same time because you got to keep them <laughs> occupied all the time. <laughs> Summer vacation, extra three months this year. For sure, that we were not like, you know, prepared ahead of time for. So you're like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, the weather is not the best right now to let them play outside all day long so yeah you're like all right yeah. a, little, a little extra screen time yeah whatever <laughs> right do we're something. all doing what we can do right now right <laughs> exactly yeah so you mentioned you're uh you're still working your day jobs so what are your day jobs <laughs> Um, Dave actually took off, he was able to, and um, me and Blair still work uh, consistently at the car wash. So, so it's, it's a decent job because we don't interact with people. We just automatic car wash, so take care of the equipment and send people through, and that's all we do. So decent to be able to do that. When it's, when, when it's all normal, it's great because we get out by 7 and go gig um, all weekend, but <laughs> yeah. right now it's a little weird. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But without all these gigs, you know, it's uh, it's been pretty, pretty nice to be able to work and then come home and rehearse and work on some music and, you know, focus on some working on new stuff rather than have to focus on all the gigs that we had planned. So at least like kind of make up for some of the, you know, side effects of this pandemic. <laughs> for sure like kind of you know do some stuff with different projects and stuff so of course we're going to talk about the music that you guys have been doing and all of that but what else have you guys been doing besides music to keep yourselves busy in your free time um well recently i picked up some skateboarding so i've been doing that nice. uh enjoy i've enjoyed that since i was really young so you know thought i might as well do something with some extra free time uh, get outside and be by myself, uh, you know, social distancing, right, you know, so right, right. other than that, usually like hiking, I think like we all like to go out walking in the woods and stuff, so. Dave, you've been doing foraging, right? Go uh, yeah, for a few things. Me and my girlfriend, we found a lot of mushrooms in the woods that you could eat and cook, and then we actually brought them home and ate them and cooked them. That's very cool. That's Aside very from cool. that, I'm probably going to throw a trans in my car. Just for fun. Very cool. Very cool to like be able to pick up some new hobbies and do some stuff. So talk about the music that you guys have been doing. I saw you've been doing live streams um, and they have like different themes and stuff. What's what's going on with that? Yeah, so as soon as it all hit, we had a couple of gigs get canceled right away and we figured that we take the time to figure out a live stream thing and we wanted to use you know better audio than than what you'd usually get off the phone so dave being the whiz he has hooked up everything to his interface and we were able to get full soundboard audio from the basement uh with all of our microphones that we that we have for gigs and um we decided that instead of just because the first couple were just like set lists that we made up like something we might play at the bar or whatever maybe less covers but we decided it would be fun to do some specific themes. So we did like an 80s night and we learned a bunch of new tunes for that. We, we learned like a Kiss tune and another Talking Heads tune and, and stuff like that, you know. And then we did a, a jam band night. So of course we threw in Humphreys and Mo and uh, we did some Stafford and Goose. 
some fish. Yeah, we so we don't really play fish live. We, that's kind of one of the bands we stay with and covering. And we ended up learning a tune for <laughs> the live stream for for our friends. So, but yeah, so we've been doing it like that, and it's just been fun. Um, but now we haven't done it in about a week, two weeks, I guess. We've been focusing on uh, trying to write some more music. That's very cool. So let's take it back. Why don't you each introduce yourselves and uh, tell us a little bit more about who you are, how old you are, and what you play, and how long you've been playing your instrument. Sure. So my name is Taylor O'Connor. I'm the guitar player and the singer and uh, primary songwriter uh, for the band. And I'm 29 years old. I started playing drums when I was about eight. And I started playing guitar when I was about 13. And I've done both since then. Um, I still sit down at the drum kit when I can. Went to college for music for a couple of years at a community college, focused on drums there. and. Uh, I also play piano, but mostly I stick to the guitar and the drums. And uh, my name is Blair O'Connor. I am 27. I've uh, been picking up drumsticks since I can even remember. Um, started focusing on them probably, I think I was like six or seven, focusing on them more. I was ahead of the curve when music started in school, so that was helpful. Um, other than that, I, uh, I sing on some of the songs, uh, back up, sometimes lead, um, help contribute ideas to writing, and, and then that's uh, pretty much it. All right, my name is Dave, not O'Connor. <laughs> <laughs> I started out on flute when I was five, and then got switched to bass when I was like 14, so kind of a latecomer. Grew up playing like prog rock, metal, math rock, and a lot of jazz, and, and I went to school for a music ed degree, learned how to play every instrument, and now I just really like bass and piano a whole lot. Mostly Fender Rhodes, if anybody listening knows what that is, electric piano, beautiful. He has a beautiful Fender Rhodes in the jam room too, so. Yeah, my dad told me when I was in high school, if I learned how to play piano, he'd give me his backup Fender Rhodes that he had for parts. So I just practiced my ass off, got a piano, got a bunch of parts for it, and restored it with my girlfriend at the time. So that was real fun. Very cool. That sounds like a very, very cool uh, thing. We'll have to talk about that sometime. I'm sure there is someone listening that would just nerd out all about that. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I could do a whole, like, restoration Fender Rose guide at this point. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We tore, cool. every single, we tore every single screw, spring, pickup, tine, part, piece of wood, key, felt everything apart on that whole piano, and I rebuilt it from scratch. I mean, it's from 75. Wow. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Wow. There's a company, Vintage Vibe, not a sponsor, that got all our... <laughs> that got all the parts for me. That's very cool. Uh, the if they want to sponsor us, they can. Yeah, they want to sponsor us. They <laughs> if if they want to, you know, nobody's going to say no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so talk about coming together and becoming a band. How long have you guys been playing the music together? Uh, it's since, uh, what was it, 2012? 2012. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so what happened was in 2011, um, I was hanging out, uh, with my buddy that I had met at college, uh, Brian Obrecht, who, uh, actually one night we were hanging out in this like theater at Montclair and, uh, he was listening to music and I heard from across the room and I was very intrigued and I went over to him and I asked him who it was and he said, I'm Freeze McGee. I said, who? And he said, I'm Freeze McGee. <laughs> <laughs> and I was I blown away and was hooked like since the first song I heard we've listened to them all night and then I started diving deep into like, the Hall of Fame like it was like 2010 Hall of Fame at, at the time like that instantly became like my favorite like go-to just listen to all those jams um, nothing too fancy probably my favorite song but then uh, I started trying to show them to Taylor and it took like a couple months of like showing him stuff. Like I wasn't showing him the right Humphreys stuff. I was really in like, Outside Bar. I was really into G Love. 
So I was super okay. into that kind of vibe. And I was like, yeah, I don't really and want to. Meanwhile, I wasn't showing him things that were like, do you love vibe? I was showing him right. things like, yo, Wizard Burial Ground, <laughs> check out this song. Right. Like, I'm like, yeah, right. show up the 40s theme. And it goes over to church, check out this song. Like, you know, all these sweet songs, right? And, right. you know, her bird bat, check out this song. And, you know, and then, like, finally, like, I don't even know. Like, I went to my first show in the summer of 2012 and I they played G Love opened up and I didn't necessarily tell Taylor that G Love was opening up. I just tried to, to get him to come to Umphreys and didn't mention anything about the opener because I didn't even know at the time until I got there. And then G Love opened up and I was like, oh cool, Taylor would have really liked this. And then they go and play like Woman Wine and Song featuring G Love. And so then afterwards, I got the recordings and I started showing, showing Taylor and he was like, oh my God, that, that's awesome. Like, I wish I went like, and so then he started getting hooked and started listening to them. And then like, we literally like a month later, if that, like we started like, even like a, a week later, I think we started playing together. Like, and yeah, I was writing a bunch. I've been writing songs since I started playing guitar. That was like my first foray into it. It was like learn a song, get all the chords from that song, and then try and write my own song using those chords, you know, make them up different rhythms and stuff, because being a drummer, that's all I knew. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had a bunch of songs. I was playing at open mics, and Blair jumped on a, a djembe, and we were doing acoustic stuff and started playing it together. But um, that was kind of how we started the band. It was like right in there, August 2012, we got a bass player shortly thereafter that, that was uh, our buddy Ben, who uh, later left the band. But Blair met Dave in college. Yeah, I met Dave like shortly after all of that. I think it was the, I think it was literally like two months later, I think I met Dave and Dave and I just jammed like easily. Actually, no, it was even before my first on free show. Yeah, I think you were, were at that funny show. Yeah, first on free show. Yeah, you were there too. That's also my first on free show. Yeah, right. <laughs> It have been mine. Yeah. I waited a whole year. So yeah, that was that was cool. Dave and I, the first time we met each other, like we we like didn't really talk. We just like introduced each other, like our names, and that was like it. And then we went. But the goal was for him, Brian, and I to go jam. And so Brian was tuning his guitar, and Dave was already in tune. So him and I started jamming immediately, and just started. We just looked at each other, and started smiling, and just jamming and laughing because we were like sinking into pockets already. And it was just that easy, like to pick things up with him. Um, and then later on, like when Taylor had said that we had, we had no bass player for a little bit, like we were in between bass players and. Uh, nobody was really working out, and uh, I asked Brian if he wanted to come fill in, like, or just come sit in, and then if he would, you know, bring Dave along with him to play bass, because we needed a bass player, <laughs> and so he asked Dave, and Dave was, like, down, and so he came, and we jammed, and then that night, we were like, yo, you want to keep jamming with us, and he was like, yeah, so that was it. And that was December 2016 that, that, that Dave officially yeah, played his first, right, or something. first show on bass. Uh, yeah, all right, there you go. Forgetting about that time yeah. kid where I played Rhodes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. We oh, did have them uh, in, like, 2013. So we did try to expand the band back in We played some Rhodes, and we had our buddy Brian playing guitar with us and, as well for a little bit. But I think the trio really worked well for us. Especially now, it's seemed easier to get playing bars and rehearse that way. And yeah, and playing bars, just being able to get in there with three guys and go like, okay, we're gonna play a whole show and not have to worry about the space. Cause you know, you've been to a bar. Some places are tight. <laughs> Some places yeah. you're like crowded in the yeah. corner. You know, barely get the drum set in there. It was crazy yeah. though. I mean, yeah. Yeah. that first night I heard Umphreys, that was that was a turning point in my life. Cause before that, I never really thought about like, oh, I could play drums. Like, I, I should do that. Like, I just it, you know what I mean? Growing up, I just enjoyed doing it, so I did it. And like, then it it hit me like when they, like when I heard what they were doing, I was like, that is amazing. Like, I want to do that. I want to do something on that level. Like, that's that's some high caliber stuff. Like, that's awesome. Um, and so that was the goal I was like trying to bring to Taylor at the time because he was doing more of like the G Love singer songwriter rap beat kind of stuff. And then I kind of like got him to like think more outside of that box and into this other one. And then, then eventually they, we, the, with Ben, the first show we played actually, Ben came out to, to that show 
and we got our bass player then and there. So then we started like electric maybe three months after that. Yeah, we started electric pretty quickly after we were doing acoustic gigs. It just became clear that it was just a better alternative to, to yeah. making good music. And it was, only, it was so limited on acoustic guitar to be able to jam it out per se. Like, you know, unless like you listen to a guy like Dave Matthews, and they sound great jamming because they have saxophone and they've got you know a violin and they've got like an electric guitar player sometimes and and all that helps to add but just acoustic guitar it's like you, you get so put in these boxes where it's like your jams are all rhythmic and, and chord based you know and then your gigs become limited and selected too like we were opening up a whole new thing with electric so yeah yeah it was a lot of fun to get it to the electric and i'm really glad we did because that's all we do now essentially the occasional acoustic gigs yeah ever since Dave came along. We the only time we do acoustic is for an acoustic gig. Yeah, it just opens it up so much more for you to create, just so much, so much more, and and, and allows you to expand your sound and and your music that much more. So yes, talk about so different. So talk about the the name of your band. Why did you guys name yourself Mosey Beat? So this came along before Dave. Um, we had been throwing around band names, um, so because when I was in high school, I used to gig at uh, play acoustic shows as Taylor O'Connor Music, whatever. Just <laughs> it was easy to make a Facebook page in 2007 and sure. made that page, you know. And so originally, our first couple gigs were Taylor O'Connor Music, and then I was like, well, maybe the first Taylor gig, and Friends, and or then the first, and then the second gig, the first two gigs, I yeah. Think. And then eventually, we were like, you know what? So we started thinking of band names and we were tossing it around. I'm a big Chili Peppers fan. So originally, like, I wanted something to do with, like, vegetables. And I don't know why. It's just what I wanted. And my buddy was like, uh, Ben was like, why don't we call it Mosey Beat? Because we kind of jam, you know, we mosey along and then we get to the beat. And I was like, yeah, but let's spell it B-E-E-T. And so <laughs> originally we were spelling it like the vegetable, you know, like the root, the root vegetable, you know, Mosey Beat, man. And then we dropped that one kind of like uh, a few years later when we decided to release our first album online and, and just put it Mosey B with the E-A-T. It was always getting well, spelled wrong. Anyway. This is what was happening. It was like every time we go to a bar and we play and they're like, we're, we say our name's Mosey B, they're already thinking B-E-A-T. They're not thinking B-E-A-T. And then you have to explain it to them. And then every drunk person that is listening to you at the bar and wants to remember who you are was trying to ask you who you are. And then you had to explain it to them and hope they remembered because they're drunk. So like it, it became like a hassle after a couple of years. We were like, you know what? We're gonna start an Instagram. We're gonna create a website. Let's just we're gonna yeah. release an album. Let's let's just yes. Over the years, we have been called uh, by people at the bar, noisy beats, um, moldy beat. Um, mossy beat, mossy feet, Mo mosey beach, you know, so, mosey beast, yeah, oh, so we made up mosey beasts and, and mosey beach, we did a skit one time for our buddy's album show, it's been, uh, used to play in the area called Banshee, and they were like, hey, you want to play an album show, we're like, yeah, man, we do, and we had just played their small backyard festival, and we were like, man, we just did a cool set for them like only two months ago. Let's do something different. So we came up with the idea of Mosey Beach. And I used to be a lifeguard, so I gave everybody lifeguard shorts and we had whistles and put zinc on our nose. And we were and we were calling ourselves Mosey Beach. <laughs> and the shorts and the shirt it was, it was great. People whistled in the middle of one of the songs. I was telling people to walk. I think uh, at first <laughs> people were like, what are these guys doing? Come on stage. <laughs> Happy so we're gonna try and put it all together into some some sort of home movie at random. some point. <laughs> yeah, randomly we'll put it somewhere. That's right. hilarious. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, we're a little we're a little fun like that. We we like to do fun stuff. Get weird. You have to though. You have to keep the, the fun about it because that's the reason why you're doing this is because you wanted to have fun and and create and you know be yourselves and that's exactly what you're doing you're you're taking all of your little things and putting it into there i think that's awesome yeah 100 yeah i agree with that. keep yourself saying that way yeah absolutely and and, and, and 
and you're making it your own, you know, you're doing your thing and, and that's, what's going to make you different and stand out and continue to keep it fresh and fun. And, you know, just like you're doing with your live streams, you're doing the theme nights and everything. I think that's fantastic, especially now it, it keeps, you know, people having a good time, which is, what we have to do. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. We took, a little bit, we took a little homage from, from Humphreys doing the, um, like choose your own adventure theme you know we kind of took that idea from them a little bit and was like this would be really fun for us because we all felt like we were at a level where we're jamming very well together and uh, we we're like let's see what we can do and honestly i think like some of our best jams from the live stream from people were just saying hey play 70s porno or hey like you know egyptian sex death metal and it's like okay cool some weird topic that i get to think about to play music to whatever, now and whatever make it i would it think sound. this would sound like so that was definitely a little a little you know uh feather in the in the hat you know to umphreys you know that was like something that we definitely took from them <laughs> Well, and it helps keep your skills really sharp. You know, now you're you're redirecting your mind in a completely different path and it keeps you on your toes and it keeps you guys in sync together and paying attention and listening. And so it's it's fantastic that you've embraced stepping outside of your comfort zone musically to, to try these new things because it's obviously, it's just gonna help you in the long run to, to play like that. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. So talk about your album. You guys released your album Nomadic Vision last year, right? May 2019. Um, is this your first album? That was actually our third album, but I will say as a band, we kind of all agree it's our first communal album. Yeah. A lot of the other, well, well no, the other it's album. our first album written with all three of us right as like because flight was our first album which taylor and i had mostly like contributed to with some from our former bassist yeah um and then back to the roots was pretty much taylor's stuff from when early on like back to the roots was like basically what we were playing in 2012. yeah it was like our original yeah. demos kind of redone and, and dave played on all those albums too but Nomadic Vision was the first one that we all contributed a lot of writing to yeah. and, and arranging. A lot of arranging happened for that album between the three of us and it was a collaborative effort. Um, I had a lot of fun recording it and I know that I'm super proud of that one and, and I'm sure that I can speak for these guys, they are as well, for, for the album we've released. Um, so that one came out, yeah, last year. We've had nothing but great response off of it. We feel like the gigs have gotten bumped up a little bit as far as what we're getting offered because of it. It gives us a very uh, forward-moving sound. It doesn't sound stagnant. It sounds, you know, in my opinion, and as well, but it's, it's a little more professional and um, mature than the other albums were. Um, and we sold, I mean, CDs, this is a dead market, but I mean, we sold almost all of our CDs already within a year. And we, I mean, we only ordered a hundred, but you got to think we play 50 shows. That's two CDs a show, you know, and for a bar band, that's kind of, kind of our goal is to make, make people take the music home with them so that when we're playing that bar again, they come back after having the CD in their conference, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's very awesome. Congrats, you guys. That's that's a very cool accomplishment. You guys are, you have a new song coming out, I understand. Yeah, um, we actually decided instead of doing a single, we're going to do an EP. So we're going to have um, three full songs, and then what we like to call like interludes or intros. They're two, you know, two, three minute pieces that can be used as an intro or as an interlude in between jams and songs and live shows. So it's gonna be a final total EP, about 25 minutes worth of material and all stuff that, um, that we're working on right now. Um, so yeah, definitely we're gonna be in the studio as long as all goes well with opening stuff up in PA. We're gonna be in the studio in June and it should be released by July. But the only thing you know, we'll probably have it on Spotify, Apple Music, all that stuff, and then maybe uh, um, CD Baby, and uh, we might do, um, oh, what's that other one they call it? SoundCloud, mm -hmm. and a couple other places this time, too, because it's all digital, so it might be a little bit more accessible than the last albums were. They're uh, mostly, uh, 
basically only on major streaming platforms. Or on our website for free. Or on our website for free, yeah. So anybody listening that doesn't want to have the stream platform, we do have a little link there. You go to albums and you click on it, you can stream them all for free off our website because we're cool like that. Very cool, very cool. And I'll make sure to link all sorts of stuff for you guys in show notes and remind everybody about where they can find you. Um, at the end of everything. Um, so let's talk about some Umphreys McGee again. Taylor, you took a lesson with Jake. Let's talk about that. All right. So it was a really cool. I have always said if I got the chance to meet Jake, I'd love to be able to pick his brain about gear, talk to him about music, and have him show me a few things. And Unfortunately, with the circumstances the way they are, something good did come out of it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it was really cool to be able to take that lesson. And, and we chatted about gear for a while. He gave me a bunch of different ideas on how to work songwriting, differently approaches, if you will, to writing songs and, and uh, some different technique things to work on that, that can expand my songwriting and, and kind of get me thinking in a different direction. Um, so super grateful for the lesson. And uh, just the knowledge that he chose to share, because, you know, you could take a lesson from somebody and they can just choose to sit there and show you how to play the major scale all day. But he decided to go the other route and said, here's some really unique things to work on. And I actually ended up doing uh, two more after that. So I, I took three total and uh, each one, it kind of just built upon the other and, and added a bunch of different things to my uh, toolbox, if you will. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful to be able to have that stuff accessible now and, and have talked to him and and gotten to, to know him as a musician a little bit more, hear about some of the quirky side projects he wants to do and stuff like that. So it's just really, really neat. That's very cool. I'm sure it was an awesome experience. I did a chill session with him and it was only 20 minutes, but it was very cool to just, just talk to him and you know learn more about him and what he's been doing now that they're off and it's definitely worth it. Anybody who wants to should totally do it. <laughs> yeah, that live for li like the live for live lesson masters or whatever they're doing it, man. It's just a super great opportunity. I agree 100% with Sarah. Anybody who wants to just fork it over, just do, just pay for it. It's going to be worth it. <laughs> for sure, um, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, even just the chill chef. The sessions are cool because we did one for my friend's birthday with Brian and Joel and. It was so much fun. Ooh. It was almost like a mini therapy session in a way to to just hang out with them and shoot the shit. That's and awesome. It was cool. That's fantastic. It's really cool. Yeah, definitely. Even the chill sessions, like, do one. They're just fun. <laughs> just do one. Yeah, so. yeah. You <laughs> should do <laughs> one. They're just they're just fun. <laughs> Maybe we'll get stasic. We'll, we'll have him get a rack of 30s and we'll see who can drink faster. The three of us are in. <laughs> I want I want in on that chill ses session just to watch. <laughs> right. You're on our side. We got we, he's got he's got you know serious leg up in the competition. You gotta help us drink the beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do what I can. <laughs> so um so I heard that Blair also took a drum clinic with Chris. When did that happen? Uh, so that happened in 2017. Uh, okay. Chris hosted a drum clinic. Oh, well, no, sorry. Uh, he, yeah, I guess kind of was hosting a drum clinic in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania at a music shop. Um, they, they had him come in and he had two different kits set up. Um, and he was going to do show stuff with Umphreys and then stuff about you know, the jazz stuff that he went to schooling for. Um, so, Erie, Pennsylvania is about eight hours from where I am. Um, so, I drove out to Erie, Pennsylvania, and the clinic was about three hours, I think, uh, maybe two hours, three hours, like total. Um, and it was very informative. Um, and he talked about, you know, a little bit about his, you know, history growing up and then, um, you know, influences and uh, talked about his studies in school and um, comp different competitions he did, uh, going over to Europe to do competitions and stuff like that. Um, he talked about 
techniques, uh, different books, and it was, it, there was a lot of knowledge within, you know, the, I think the actual clinic was like an hour. Um, it was a lot of knowledge within that hour, and then I got to kind of talk to him a little bit afterwards too, so that, that was really cool. Um, and that was, that was, I think, my first experience getting to talk to him face to face. Um, I've had a couple since then. Uh, he's such a nice guy, such, such a, you know, great <laughs> drummer too. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of crazy talking to, talking to him because it's just, you know, such a huge inspiration. It's, I don't know. It, it's, it's hard to find like what to say and questions to ask him, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. It was a very cool experience. <laughs> very cool experience indeed. Um, okay. and I drove home eight hours. So, <laughs> 16 hours of driving in one day. It was, it was, it was worth it. Every, every bit of it. I bet. I bet the experience and the tools that you are going to have for life, you know, just like Taylor mentioned with, with oh, yeah. spending the time with Jake, you have those tools now that you can draw from and, and probably, you know, when you guys are touring again, I'm sure there's, some things that you can even take a along with you, have them being on the road for as long as they have been doing this. Um, Blair, you mentioned how they uh, inspire you professionally to kind of go in and do this. How have Umphreys uh, inspired the other guys professionally and personally? Sure. I... I got a large influence from Humphreys because they've done something that I've always wanted to do, which was kind of combine the concept of like vertical form improvisation that jazz has with the more horizontal form improvisation that rock and roll does. Okay. And kind of what I mean by that is like, take like a Grateful Dead jam or an Allman Brothers jam or an Humphreys jam, it's horizontal. It starts at A and it gets you to B and then usually goes back into a song or the next song from there. You know, it's got a path that it follows. It follows a clear path forward. But a lot of bands before Humphreys, they weren't really as in depth as they were with like improvising vertically over those forms at the same time, which is like as the verse section, if you will, you know, not really, but close enough, comes around that they made that they're improvising on. They can stretch that so far, but still have the ability to move on to the next section and keep it moving horizontally forward. I thought about that all going to school for jazz when I was studying it, I'm like, wow, it's insane. complex and stretch out. It. Wouldn't it be great if somebody could stretch out that far but still keep sight of going on to somewhere new and like a constant that's happening the entire time and not a lot of bands, especially at Humphreys' caliber, has been able to do that these days. And I just think that's incredible. Absolutely. And that's a fantastic way to describe that. I love that. And I actually can't wait to go back when I'm editing this recording and listening to that part again, because that was a fantastic explation of yeah, it. Yeah, just don't quote me on the part where I call what they set up a verse. That's just for people <laughs> to understand it a little easier. <laughs> no, that's... <laughs> yeah, we would, use, we would use letters most of the time. They would use like A, B, and C, and you would letter the sections most of the time, like from our side of the bandstand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, the other side of the bandstand, it's mostly verse, chorus, and bridge. Okay. Very cool. I like the way that you explained that. Yeah, right. So there's that one. So um, so, yeah, for me, Umphreys was like a big inspiration after, like I was saying before, I've been playing guitar since I was a kid, and Really, I was really into G Love in high school, and um, you know, people people like him, the, the Jack Johnsons, the Jason Mrazes, the guys that wrote like funky acoustic rock tunes. And I was, uh, I'm still am a fairly adept drummer, and took a lot of that knowledge from doing drum corps camps and marching band and. and college uh, jazz drumming and thought, well, yeah, I could put that into the guitar, but like how, you know? And it wasn't until I started really diving into Umphreys with Blair that I understood kind of the path, the steps that I needed to sort of take, which were uh, meter rhythm so much and think about the forms that you were playing in jazz band and, and write songs like that, write songs that have varying parts 
to where you know your verse does sound distinctly different than your chorus. There's a lot of, and there's no knock on it, but a lot of like the Mrazes and John John Mayers and Jack Johnsons and and G Loves is they they write a, a whole song that has a specific vibe, whereas like an Umphrey song will have specific vibes in each part. And I started to think about it like that, and was and you listen to Back to the Roots, for instance, all the stuff on there basically has a vibe per song. But then some of the stuff on Nomadic Vision, you start to hear, even on um, Flight. Flight, you'll start to hear some of the differences because even though Flight was recorded first, it, it was written it. afterwards. But Nomadic Vision, we started to go, well, especially Unreal McCoy Part 2. If you listen to it, the beginning is very spacey and like kind of got this 16th note drum thing and then you drop into this funk pocket that just hits. And then the next section is a Latin groove for better or worse terms where it's, it's literally taking a, a completely opposite clave of what your funk dance is and going to another place and then coming back, you know, to a different thing. And so that was what influenced me from Unfreeze McGee a lot, was just stylistically taking something and putting something that's all the way over here into that, into that same song so that you can get a different feel that, that hasn't been done yet, you know? Um, and you know that not just the technique, the precision that each one of the members can put on stage and their professionalism and musicianship, you know, being the guy that can play it perfectly. And if they don't play it perfectly, they sure as hell don't make somebody else look like they messed up, you know? Yeah. That's that's the part that really, like, that's what I take from their band a lot is, is all of that. Yeah, very, very cool. So how many shows have you each seen? I'm at 30... I want to say 34, 35. I can't remember if Umbo is supposed to be 35 and 36 or 34 and 35. So I'm right around just about 30s. <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, I'm at 45. I was trying to hit 50 this year, but... Wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm only at like five, but I don't really like to go out much. I'd rather sit at home and listen to it on my headphones. And then yeah. talking with her email, she's uh, she's at forty five or forty six as well. She's a huge Unfreeze fan. We actually met her through Unfreeze Blair. Blair and her met at a show, and then uh, she found out about our band and figured out that we lived in the same area. So it was a really cool happenstance there. That's very cool. Yeah, she was super stoked to reach out to me and and have you guys on the show. She's been very cool to to get to know. That's awesome. Yeah, she told us about the podcast. She said, I've been following this girl and she's got these podcasts and stuff. And she's like, I think you guys are fitting great. It's all Umphreys related. I was like, all right. <laughs> I started listening to your podcast. I was like, yeah, man. I'm in. I really love the one you did with Jake's mom too. That was really, really awesome to hear a lot of that stuff. Yeah, she's a really awesome lady. I've, I've had the chance to really get to know her since then. And she's such an awesome woman. And a really awesome mom and that was a, that was a lot of fun to to do i've been very fortunate to meet a lot of really cool people because of of this show so and i appreciate Absolutely. you guys listening that's awesome thank you yeah 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 oh, thanks for doing what you do oh thank you Wonderful. so you guys mentioned that you did play an umphrey's cover what song did you play a few yeah, yeah. Okay. So because we, yeah, so we, we uh, let's see, we do remind me minus the end part. We'll usually do what we call remind me kitchen, right? So we okay. play remind me, we go into an improv jam, then we play kitchen, and we improv in kitchen and and, and in the kitchen. Okay. Um, we'll get that. We'll get that end part down and remind me someday. Maybe one day. Someday. Yeah, so, like, we'll get it down there. <laughs> you gotta be like Jake level to do that, and I, I might be like down here, you know, and he's like. Let's just say, can I go? We hit Hopper teacher, but we need to remind me's ending. We get up there, but... Yes, and then, let's see, we also play Andy's Last Year, which is always great when we go to a bar and we see a bunch of guys with pins on their hats and stuff, you know, and especially if they look older than me, and I go, all right, let's play Andy's, and then we'll play Andy's, and, like, these guys are like, yeah, man, you know, because they remember that tune, you know? We play Booth Love. Booth Love, yeah. With the intro, the real nice, you know, mellow intro. Yeah. Yeah, we've done yeah, we've done, we've we've done wait around. We've done wait around. Uh, nice. We, we've tried um, 
Nemo a bunch. We haven't really nailed it yet. Um, we've got in uh, just one part. Bullhead City. We've done that. Yeah, we have. Uh, so quite a Woman, few. Wine, and Song. Woman, Wine, and Song. We've done. Okay. We've done quite a few of these teams. We're, you know, again, big fans of what they do. And the same, right? We, uh, yeah, we did your Blue and Cat one. We did your Blue and Cat one time, yeah. <laughs> and we were electric guitar and drums, and we played your Blue and Cat, so that was a good time. Um, but, yeah, like, we'll, we do a bunch of their covers, and we try to only do one or two a night if we're playing a bar. But the thing is that we've seen so many bar bands do, you know, Tom Petty and and Bruce Springsteen and all, all these things. And you said Bruce. It's fine. It's like... We're just not that band, so we try and bring something else to the table. You know, it's like we'll play, we'll play like the you know, the Talking Heads dance party tunes, Psycho Killer, and you know, Burning Down the House, and, and you know, This Must Be the Place, and we'll do all those kind of cool '80s type tunes. Um, Sometimes but, we'll put a spin on some of our covers too, like how oh, yeah. influence from Humphrey. It's like they talk about the spinning around in a yeah. way, because yeah, Dave, you want. to uh, I, did, I did an arrangement of Spin Me Around where you use like a Latin clave beat for the verse section. And they, they got like a synth riff in that song. The ticka 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 that just kind of chills in the background. I'm like, that'd be a good bass line with a Latin vibe. So we do the whole Spin Me Around with that little synth riff as the bass line and the Latin vibe and then funk for the chorus, back to the clave for the verses and then finish out with a real heavy funk section. Yeah, like, uh, it's super like, fun. Dance, uh, also like, hard dance funk. Also, when I go back to school and finish my student teaching, I'm going to play with my college orchestra again, and my teacher was open to stuff. I'm thinking of doing Mantis for like a 48-piece string orchestra. I think that'd be really cool. That would, that would be <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> you got to get the violins, like the whole like percussion section, the brass. Like high strings. Yeah, it would be so sick. So, like, if that happens, please reach out and let me know about this. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> please yeah. let me know because that would be so awesome. We've also tried our hand at some mashups. We'll get front row. Thank <laughs> you. Mashups. We've done, uh, what was the one that we really like to do recently? Oh, um, Lose yourself to moonlight. So yeah. it's it's lose yourself to dance uh, by by Daft Punk, mm -hmm. and then also um, dancing, dancing in the moonlight by King Harvest. King Harvest. Nice. Uh, we'll do a bit of both, and we'll kind of mash them together. together. You know, the same similar to the way Humphreys does, a little bit less complex. You know, a little bit more bar bar we're oriented, we're but we're getting there. And then we <laughs> also do uh, we call it. Um, uh, another remix in the wall. So we'll do Young Lust, and then we'll go into this funky jam that we made up uh, one time playing it. it sounds kind of like a, like a, almost like a dance, like remix, kind of like yeah. DJ kind of vibe. And then we'll go into uh, some, another Brick in the Wall part two, and, uh, and play a bit of that, and then go back into the funky jam thing. So nice. I would love to hear that. Uh, it's yeah, a it lot of fun. It gets dirty. If, if I can, I'll try and find, I think we did one of the live streams we did it, so I'll find which one it is. I'll send you the link in the email. Uh, yeah, for just, sure. That'd be sick. I would love to hear that. We have a few MP3s of it from the shows. We're mixing down for archive also. Oh, yeah. That's oh, one thing we are doing. Good. We're going to be getting some archive stuff going on, too, because we don't have a whole ton of live stuff out. One live album out on, on Spotify and stuff, and then we're going to put the archive page up so that people can download it for free. Oh, that'll be sweet for sure. Yeah, let me know when you guys got that all up and I'll make sure to share the shit out of that too. So if you guys could sit in with Umphreys on any song, what would it be? Oh no, it's freaking out. No! There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, do that whole thing up for you. Okay, so restart. All right, so if you could sit in with Umphreys on any song, what would it be? Oh, jeez. For, oh. for me, for for me, for comfortability purposes, uh, like feeling like I could hang with the guys, I'm gonna say in the kitchen. I feel like I've got those parts in my hands enough that I could I could play without thinking. And sit in and, and do a cool jam because I feel comfortable. I'm going to say in the kitchen will be the tune for me. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dinners. Dinners. Nice. Nice. Either instrument that I play would be fine, but that's the difficulty with bass is you can never sit in with anybody on bass. Little sidebar. First show I went to, everybody around me started going, Daners, Daners, they're playing Daners. And I had no idea what they were saying. I thought they were saying Daners. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. Like, we're in Pennsylvania. Maybe it's a weird, like, accent. But then later on, listen back to the show. And it took me about a year of listening back to the show to realize they actually said Daners. And I was like, what? <laughs> Funny that he said dinners because I was thinking like the song that I was sitting on I for 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 like I, there's like two aspects so like I'd want to hit something like crucial taunt because that would be a lot of fun to play and I would love to just go in on that but there's another side of like fun of like night nurse that I would just love to get behind but I don't know either one of those two I guess nice nice all right so here's another hard one for you. So let's say you are on tour and you're op opening for Umphreys. Where would, where in the world would you like to open for them? Uh, anywhere, anywhere, <laughs> USA or Canada or Iceland or <laughs> anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. But honestly, um, an honest answer: Capitol Theater or Beacon Theater because they're both really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm too practical, so I gotta say Stone Pony because it's in our backyard coming from Jersey. Oh, and that outdoor show would be so sweet. Yeah, I was thinking Stone Pony or Red Rocks because it's gorgeous. It's just beautiful. I don't know yeah, why I'm on that stage, but like to open, I, I, I don't know, Stone Pony's a great show every time. Every so time looks fun. fun. <laughs> so good. fun. I don't know. Nice. Yeah, Beacon, maybe? I don't know. That's, yeah. that's tough. That's a tough one. Like, this is a good question. That is a good question. I don't know. <laughs> then again, Penn's Peak is like a beautiful venue too. Like, all these great venues, tough choices. I'm gonna say like Stone Pony because I can see the beach while I'm on stage. All right, I'll take Stone Pony. Nice. I like that. I've only been to the Stone Pony once, but it was it was a good time. Yeah, it's a, it's a rock show. Oh, for good. sure. Um, get to the show. Been going there for so long. Barbecue stand on the beach and raspberry too. All right, we're back. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> it's uh, the weather here is like getting so bad, so I think that's why like this the sky is so gray and dark right now here. It's awful. So yeah, hopefully, like uh, you got that storm that was supposed to come to us. Then. Yeah, we were supposed to get a storm, and it just it must have shifted way more. It's gorgeous out here. <laughs> it was like, really so nice. Shifted. It was. So warm this morning. It was like seventy, and I'm like, yes. This oh, it's is like awesome. eighty four here. Yeah. So, like, dying. <laughs> yeah, completely different than what it was like probably a week ago. Oh um, yeah, with the snow. <laughs> yeah. We're coming up for work the one day. <laughs> yeah. What's going on here, people? <laughs> All right. So, is there anything else that you guys want to touch on that? I didn't cover. Is there anything else you maybe want to let the listeners know that I didn't uh, talk about? Um, yeah, sure. Like we've, we've got, you know, the Facebook page and all that stuff, uh, Facebook, Instagram, we do have Twitter, but we're not really proud of it yet because we, we've got to build the followers. So, you know, on the low key, follow us on Twitter, but we need to get our game up. If you want free stickers, free um, stickers are an option. Contact us on, on Instagram or Facebook. Um, also, we have other merch. We've got t-shirts. Grab some merch. We've got beer koozies. They look like this. And they say, uh, waste until you stop to think about it, which is one of the lines from our song, Exist. Uh, I don't know. CDs. You know, they can contact us with any merch. So, YouTube? Yeah, yeah, we have a YouTube page with uh, some live videos of us playing. And that would be a really cool thing for anybody who hasn't gotten to see, it, gotten to see us uh, check, to check out. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll have you email me all the links, anything that you want me to share. I'll make sure to put it all out there for everybody to check you out. So this absolutely. was really awesome, guys. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful I finally got to 
get to know each one of you and talk to you and get to have you on the show. You guys are welcome back anytime. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll take you up on that. Yeah. You want to meet Molly real quick, the girl who you've been talking to? <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, Hi. nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for doing this. I was just going to walk around to listen in. <laughs> yeah, no, this was great. The, the internet was a little weird, but that's just the way technology has been lately, but I'm grateful that we're all still able to connect in some way, so. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, we appreciate you doing this for yeah. us, too. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time to be on, and like I said, anytime you guys want to be on as, as you continue to grow and write more music and play more gigs and do the whole thing, you know, I'm here. Awesome. So. Yeah, and next time we're all on free together, we got to go. And yeah, it's and it'll be great. Yeah, absolutely. That would be awesome. I we were all gonna meet at Umble, but that didn't happen. No. So <laughs> let's hope for September, but yeah. we're thinking next year, I think. <laughs> I'm thinking next year. The amount of Umfree shows I've had canceled this year is just it's really sad. disheartening. Yeah. I mean, I I've had probably hit. like ten shows canceled this year. It's I know. Like, yeah. I was trying to hit fifty, so I needed five. And I can't even get five in a year. <laughs> I know. Night one of Iceland was gonna be number seventy-five for me and oh, it happened. So I, I got so number seventy five hanging in the air somewhere. So oh my it'll God. happen. Yes. They'll be back. We'll all be there enjoying the moment. And it's gonna mean that much more now, the next one. Not only because it's number seventy five, but because of all this that's happened up until then. So you're gonna, they're gonna have so much creativity too. Like to there's their jams are gonna be nuts when they first come back. They're just gonna be so fresh. It's gonna be great. It is going to be awesome. It's going to yeah. be like seeing your significant other for the first time after forever. <laughs> All right. Well, I will awesome. let you guys go. Well, thanks again. Really awesome. I, yeah, yeah, same here. Have a great time and, and stay sane. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much, guys. No Take problem. Care. Bye. Take care. <laughs>